I welcome this all of you to this lecture uh, and uh, let us have a thought process before uh, starting this lecture and we should keep in mind that agriculture is the only primary wealth of humankind. It is not only for India alone, okay. That, that spins other forms of secondary wealth. But unfortunately, in the name of modernity, people are not giving importance to agriculture today. But that is the primary wealth and which nature gives us, mother nature gives us. So we should, you know, uh, concentrate on that and uh, uh, I must tell you that if you want to be Rishi, that means sage, you will have to do Krishi. Rishi banne ke liye, Krishi karna jaruri hai. That means if you want to be a good human being, you will have to get attached to the agriculture, farming, gardening, all those things is important. So that you can understand the mother nature. That is why our ancestors were giving importance to the agriculture. And question arises, as I told, the soil is important. And then a question arises, what do you mean by soil? Soil is basically mixture of small rock particles, debris and organic materials like which you call humus, right? And which develops on the earth surface and support the growth of plant. As I told earlier, this humus comes from the microorganism. And this microorganism will be working all the time for, uh, you know, their uh, life. And those things, they will be dyed and then they will be having a lot of uh, minerals, other things will be coming from their bodies. And then that will be helpful for our thing. In the name of modernity and scientific understanding, modern, I am criticizing that. So, uh, we have started using fertilizers and which are and also pesticide insect that is spoiling the humus, you know. Microorganism is working for us, why should we, you know, use those things? There is no need and but only thing that rather to support them. And that is the reason also why you should not till, you know, depth wise, more depth wise by using the tractors, using the brutal force, rather they use the plow and then of course that the angle of the plow side is very important. And what are the kinds of uh, Indian soils you are aware, if you look at, any idea? There uh, you must have studied and I had also told you in the earlier lecture. Let me repeat again, one is alluvial soils, but question is how I will identify alluvial soils. Alluvial soils is basically comes from the river bed, you know, it will be uh, occurring in the river bed, it is carried by the river itself. Uh, and then uh, some of the uh, hum humus and other things will be carried out with that and it will become. And from the color you can know and it will be color will be yellow. I will show you some picture little later on. The black soil, black soil is basically arises from the volcanoes and then your uh, other material which will be coming during the volcanoes and it will be containing manganese and uh, other things. Uh, but unfortunately, it will be containing less organic matter, but alluvial soil will be containing lot of organic material which is required for the cultivation. Like and this uh, alluvial soil will get in Gangetic plains, the river beds nearby. I will show you that where we are getting in. And red and yellow soils, which is basically laterite, you know sediments of the laterites uh, stones which are there uh, in Tamil Nadu and other Deccan areas and then your in Odisha and then uh, Bihar some portion and laterite uh, soil is another one where iron it will be containing more iron and the aluminum right and arid soils which is be in the desert area it will be getting from the containing sand and also it will be containing less amount of uh, organic matter and forest mountain soils always will be you know containing lot of organic materials and also some portion of minerals kind of things. If you look at, this is the forest and mountain soil, what you will be getting in Kashmir and then Himachal Pradesh and some portion in the north is this region, right. And these are roughly, you may get in some other places as well, this one, but roughly we are saying. And this is your alluvial, Gangetic plains, you know, these are your, uh, you know, some portion of here and other thing, this portion also, you know, 
these, these portions are alluvial soil. And the red and yellow, this region is yellow it became you know when the iron will be less. So, that is the what will having right. And uh, this region and then like even some portion of Madhya Pradesh, some portion of Odisha, Andhra also some portion and of course, the Tamil Nadu and some portion here in uh, this region. And black soil you will get in Deccan plateau even in Tamil Nadu this mi middle portion you know this portion is black kind of things. This will be black soil and um, of course, the laterite you will get here very small portion where the mountains will be there of laterite stones and then those are the places. Of course, I have uh, also told you that the, in these regions right you will get these portions. And arid uh, soils you will get here in Rajasthan area and some portion in the coastal side also you will get arid uh, regions also right. Now, from the color you can get and this is basically which soil it would be, it will be alluvial soil right. And the black soil of course, is from color you can see right, it is a black soil and do not think that soil will be that black, but you know <laughs> like uh, in some places it will be a little white is all I mean like less black rather I cannot say. This is the soil with the red and yellow soils which will be getting in this region you know, this region red and uh, yellow, yellow where you will get only when the iron content will be less right in the soil. And uh, these are laterite soils right, uh, laterite is a stone what is being used being the less compressed you know stone you can say. And let uh, and this is about uh, basically arid soils right and this is your forest or mountain soil. So, from this color and combination you can see this is of course, the modern way of classifying the soil. But let us see now how uh, our ancestors were classifying the soil whether they were having any understanding or not right. So, <coughs> Uh, before that let us look at the farmland which is also known as Khetra in Sanskrit in or in Vedic culture right. It can be uh, divided into three categories Urbara, Urbara means fertile from the farming point of view, Anurbara means barren land right, other uh, Krishya, Krishya means arable land right, which you can use for uh, purposes, but however, uh, agriculture we will have to give uh, you know irrigation, you will have to use irrigation, you have to give water. Nature of soil, if you look at uh, that is the sarkara means uh, basically salty and sikta it will be sandy and asman means basically stony, there will be lot of stones kind will be there that is. And uh, of course, there are several uh, uh, you know text or the scriptures are there, one of them is Amarkosa and which talks about different kinds of land like uh, you know we call it uh, bhumi that is a soil, mishna uh, that is basically uh, mishna means basically our maru is a region of devoid of water right and usa means salt ground right. Of course, uh, uh, and uh, usara is spot with lime you know lime soil will be there so that is known as that means salt and the lime are different thing you know usa ushara and uh, maru actually as i told is the region of devoid uh, water and uh, mishna is a excellent soil that is the mishna soil is an excellent one right and khila are the uh, also known as apartha is wasteland that means you know which cannot be really used for cultivation and nadabam uh, Kumudaban and Sadabla, like uh, uh, that means may, you know, like these are the lands which is having different purposes, like reeds, water lilies, ratnas, are green grasses, you know, grassland kind of thing you can say, right, will be there. And um, Panakila, this is a muddy soil, if the soil is muddy and the water is there and there is become mud kind of things and very fine soil structure, then call Panakila. Anupa means land adjoining to water is known as Anupa 
right? And uh, Sarka Dila, Sarka Dila means stony soils, and uh, Siktila, sandy soils, of course, very Sikta to Siktila, right? It is adjective basically. Some of these words can be found in Vedic literature also, but I have taken some of the word uh, different, you know, defining different kinds of land. That word, if you look at, they are having a varieties kind of thing. We will see as we go on. And in ancient India, land were generally classified in three categories, jangala, I mean where you will be having dry or arid land where you won't use for cultivation, you keep as it is, right, for vegetation, you know, kind of things, vegetation. There is Anupa wetland where lot of water and other things will be there, which will be also won't be using for cultivation. Southern and moderate moisture on the basis of moisture content and these categories is basically based on the what? Moisture content because moisture is very important for the cultivation, right? And that is uh, thing which is they had identified. Whereas we are saying the water is important. No, what moisture in the what in the soil is important for cultivation. That is the understanding they were having. And modern is water. So that is not really that right thing, but one has to look at it. We will have to uh, look at whether it is right or wrong. But uh, I think in, uh, I had a discussion some agriculture, they are saying that is the right, that moisture content in the soil is important rather than the water. And there is a also a book you can read, The Straw of Revolution, um, that is known by the Fukuaka, and in which he says that you need not to give that much of water for the rice, which is well known. I mean, we are, and that is you don't need. You can uh, cultivate the rice with a very less amount of water. I mean, of course, one has to look at the arguments, and he has proven it in his by cultivation. And uh, further classification according to the Susu Sanita based on their odor, color, and taste. If you look at, they are classifying in three ways. One is, you know, uh, according to the color, right, which we had seen just now based on that color, na, like we have alluvial soil and then red and uh, um, yellow soil, black soil, is basically from the color you can get. But they are classifying six, that is Astida black and Bipandu, there is a pallid or the dull, basically this is a lateratic profile, laterite means laterite stone and that profile, right, that color. Uh, and Samal, dark blue, this I do not know where they got this thing and I have not seen also this dark blue color soil, okay. But they are saying, I do not know. Loita, of course it is there and Sita is white, white means maybe uh, this is little bit uh, less yellow, Pita is uh, yellow and uh, Sita is there saying white in English but according to me it will be less yellow color, you know, or the uh, kind of thing that may you call Sita. So, if you look at all our matching except this Samla, that dark blue, maybe I am not an expert in this soil, so maybe it will be there, I do not know, you can look at it. So, six types of soil according to taste. Now, their taste also people are, uh, we are talking about, you know, like we really think about in modern time. Of course, we are having a lot of instrument to check the soil quality of the thing. So, therefore, we may not use, but they were having their own test and then they can test the soil and then say which is what? Madura, that is the sweet, Amla, the sour and Lavana is the saline, right? And Tikta is pungent smell and Katuka is acrid kind of things and Kasa is astringent, right? Uh, this is a, uh, you know, two, three, four, five, six, six types of soil test they can do. You can, depending on that, you can change your. And there is another uh, ancient scriptures, Diksha Ayurveda has separate section on Bhumi Nirupana. Bhumi Nirupana is identifying a land, you know, uh, for um, describing all kind of classification of soil, so that you can put the crop depending on the kind of land you are having. It is not that you will just do whatever you like, you know, <laughs> the, the way we are doing, even if it is not that area is for the rice, but we are cultivating rice there, you know, uh, because of uh, these things. So, uh, that is not, one should not do that, one should have a knowledge about the soil, that is the important point what I am trying to 
fact and which was there in ancient time as well. The soil with poisonous matter, stones, ant hills, saline and then gravely or deep underground waters are not favorable for trees. Of course, for plantation you can do because in the trees the roots will be getting into deep into the thing. So, therefore, these are the things which uh, of course, the poison matter is there means you should not really even have a crop. The southern and mudded soil is appropriate for all kind of trees that is, but in today's parlance southern means you know like you will say general. So, in uh, is useless you will say, but in otherwise this is the southern means it will be used for everywhere. And Baraha Mir, uh, who has uh, written a book uh, on that like uh, this regard the soft or uh, mridi right to be good for all kind of trees emphasize the need for preparation of soil before sowing the seed that he has uh, sanita he has talked about it that first preparation uh, of the land is to sow the sesam like you know there is a another way of improving the soil quality he is saying first you uh, sow a sesam in the soil and when they grow have put forth the flowers right see some this thing and they are uprooted that is according to uh, Briya Sanita. Briya Sanita is basically uh, I think uh, written by Baraham here Briya Sanita and uh, so he says that and what is this sesamum any idea that is the what we call in in the till right I will be showing some pictures for that in the next slide and there is a briksha ayurveda in that uh, like uh, the big trees you know or the, they have also classified the trees big trees mean banaspati trees means druma lata creepers thickest gulma and mention three ways of planting them by seeds see how you can have a plant because you, you can use the seeds you can use also the skin of a plant or the kanda right Basically, if you look at in modern times, we are calling it a tissue culture, okay. That was there also that time. You might be aware the tissue culture, you know, like you will take a, some scalp it out and then put some chemicals and then put this thing and then wrap it with a cotton and other things so that you will get a tree, okay, get a plant out of a, this thing. So, that is a basically modern time tissue culture we call and bulbous roots are the kanda, like your ginger if you take, right or some other things you can use for the uh, its propagation. And uh, Barahamira mentioned the certain trees like Asoka, Rose Apple, Plantain, Pomegranate or Draksha extra grows from the skin not from the seeds. That means these trees they were knowing that which will to be grown from which way was to be grown that is being they were knowing and they have mentioned these things. And sowing them in a proper manner, all, of course, modern people like us, we do not know those things and it is very important for us to know that. And the skins are plastered with the mud, right. And the mud and then the, some people use also gober. I had seen when I was a kid, I had gone to some village, they were using gober and pest. Gober means in the cow dung, cow dung and the mud, they will be putting it and then using it. And there is a various other, uh, what you call, ingredients they do add depending upon the locality. So, Milindipano that is a basically uh, Buddhist text, it is a if you recall that is a dialogue between a king and a Buddhist monk and implies the knowledge about seed has two main parts, he says selection of good seeds that is very important, which is good or bad a person has should have a knowledge how to decide and sowing them in a proper manner, right that is also very important what he has emphasized. And uh, keep in mind that what he has told that all seed do not germinate due to inheritance defects and each you know each seed has to be separated if it is having you know defects. Now, how to identify other things this requires some experience right. You will have to by the observation maybe you will have to so put in a water and then, then you will have to see whether it is floating, if it is floating this is not good qualities you know like there is several ways of doing that. Now, uh, those things of course, one has to uh, learn and then record it also, I mean it might be record in the earlier scriptures, but I know that uh, some people uh, were having those knowledge when I was a kid in village particularly, but today that knowledge has gone with the wind of the time, you know like 
th that knowledge are not there and if it is not being coded or recorded properly then you know we lost that knowledge and those are knowledge were there with a lot of people today you know it may be there lying in some book so it is important to the knowledge with the people than that of in some book or some person you know uh, some uh, specified persons you know the parched grains as the seeds are unfit to germinate as per the Mahabharata. You know what is this parched grain? Any idea? That means grain which will be boiling it and again dry it that is basically parched grain, right? And Arthasastra uh, which was written by Kotalya or the Chanakya which is a very important uh, scriptures and which is left you know with the plunder of the invaders you know left intact. So, that is a good thing that mention the collection of seed in appropriate time that time is important right. Yatha kalam that means you know like kalam means is basically time as the first duty of the superintendent of agriculture there was at the time superintendent of agriculture who will be see that it is being done and he, his job was to educate the people as, as well right who should collect all kinds of grains flowers, roots, creeper fruits, flax and cottons and also keep as a seed bank. Today where is the seed bank? Each village were having earlier days. But today we will be buying the seeds from the companies which is from outside and they will be uh, you know taking a lot of money from the pockets of the farmer. That is why farmer is committing suicide because everything is costly, everything he has to buy you know he is not uh, independent, he is a dependent on the market. And also the most if you look at most of the seed uh, companies are from outside today and they are having monopoly over that and we do not have our own seeds you know that is the sad part of it. Our repository should be there and it should be also uh, you know uh, be with the people as well not only the, with the government alone. To increase the fertility of seeds they are also treated before sowing right their method this has to be also tested I will be talking about that but I, I feel that uh, people might not have tested those things in modern time. So according to the Krishi Parasa seeds are not to be kept on an ant hills right or the cow shed or a delivery room you might be knowing for delivering baby earlier days we are having a separate room it is not that you, do, you will take delivery in the uh, a room which is a leaving or uh, deliver a baby in some hospital earlier days okay it was separately and that is very important uh, i will not talk about it why it is important that tradition the tradition is very important according to me i have uh, tried to interpret it little bit and uh, why it is so this question this uh, you know seeds are not to be kept on this but why we need to understand it's not that they have written we will follow it no right so therefore, uh, one has to look at it because there will be a lot of bacteria other things here which will be affecting therefore, they are, might have done this. But more studies is required to prove that that is right and unfortunately we are just saying it is not outdated but we should to understand with the modern science also. The seeds should not contact with the remnant foods, women with the menses, lamp, fire, smoke and rain right. So, uh, with these they have there is a restriction they should be kept out. So, these must not be stored in a pit or underground right you should not store that. But why? Why you will not store? There is a various reason one can think of it we go to underground the moisture content will be different and maybe it will be not enough air and then uh, these things and there might be some fungus development temperature may be low right. So, all those things has to be there one has to look at understand it as to the other seeds of grain are to be soaked in dew and dried in the heat for 7 days right why of course it is a, why they are using dew dew you know like in the particularly in the night time there will be a dew which will be there in the leaves that has to be collected will what will condense you know and those water has to be used why why not simple water because those will be what you call already evaporated and condensed back. So, it is pure or quality will be improved. So, that they, they were knowing this required and dried in the heat uh, of course, 
it is not the heat rather I will say they do not do the uh, dry in the sun directly, but they will be using the heat from the sun. Generally nowadays you will find on the road or on some people villagers are drying the uh, what you call grains on the sun sign on, on the direct sun. But that was not the earlier days, people are not having that knowledge that you should not dry that. Therefore, we are having attic systems where the on the floor you know of the house there will be a place where uh, on the top of the floor and then you will dry there with the shed right in the shed you will be drying. So, uh, those pulses for 3 days and nights ok. This is what I am saying seed of grains is for the 7 days whereas, seed of pulses for 3 days and night why these questions are, are to be looked at it you know. So, uh, with this I will stop over and we will discuss about uh, also how to take care of various seeds and sowing methods in the next lecture. Thank you very much.